struck by the display windows on Grand Street in the Lower East Side, where they sell almost nothing but wedding gowns. Nobody but myself seemed to be looking at these beautiful creations. The city went on about its business, ignoring the brightly lighted mannequins as if they were in a different world, unreal, like figures frozen in a dream. Even more unreal was a studio I discovered, where photographers were creating the illusion of wind and winter for the world of fashion. serious business in New York, this thing called fashion. Millions of dollars hang in the balance, and reputations are at stake when the designer creates overalls made of mink for milady. Everything in this famous Fifth Avenue salon is in fur. Shoes, rugs, coats, even the mural decorations. Artist Marisol created this painted fur coat, and it is said that four museums are bidding to get it for their collections. The fashion show is one of New York's most popular pastimes. It can take place at the Waldorf, a school auditorium, or uptown in the Abyssinian church. In New York, I found that everyone wants to dress fashionably and almost everyone can afford to. The mass production of clothes is one of the city's largest industries, and a tremendous variety of styles is offered to suit everyone's taste and pocketbook. There is an increasing effort to make men style conscious too, but the trend in this direction is slow, uphill all the way. Fashion is still primarily a woman's concern. Here's the wedding theme again, this time slanted toward the bride's mother whose matronly figure can sometimes be a problem unless she wears just the right thing. The dream world of fashion. Uptown, where the graceful arch of the Washington Bridge spans the Hudson River, most people have more important things to think about than the latest fashions. Here I saw more than one face that brooded bitterly on man's inhumanity to man. Others try to forget the bleakness of their lives. They try to escape in any way they can. I even found a group practicing the voodoo religion because they had been made to feel more African than American and needed some ancestral heritage that they could claim as their own. And so these New Yorkers dress themselves like Africans and sing in the authentic Yoruba language of Nigeria.
real escape in this case is the trance induced by the ritual. If religious fervor cannot induce the trance unaided, pressure on the eyeballs will slow down the heart and help a person over the threshold into oblivion. Of course, the trance is not really a solution. When they wake up, they'll find they are still in New York. In New York, a parade is everybody's business, and one of the most famous is on St. Patrick's Day. The double line down the center of Fifth Avenue is painted green for the occasion, and everybody wears something green, even the Arabs. New York's finest are very much in evidence. The dignitaries in the reviewing stand watch approvingly as the pretty legs strut past, and traffic is snarled up for hours. occasion like this, even the littlest Colleen is proud of her heritage. It's a great day for the Irish. At the Sunnyside Garden in Queens, I found the German colony in full flower. It was Munich transplanted to New York, with a band called the Knickerbocker Orchestra blaring out folk dances calculated to arouse the maximum strength through joy. was performed by the Gemütlicher Anzianer, or Little Alpine Flowers, who generally win first prize in these competitions. did find out what this dance with benches was about. They said they had picked it up from an old German movie. This, I thought, is a strange way for a tradition to start. The strong tie between this group of New Yorkers and the fatherland became even more evident at the end of the festivities when they all stood up and solemnly sang the German national anthem. Tradition dies hard. 
But in New York, the day of the stonemason who chiseled out gargoyles and ornamental cornices has passed. His art has given way to the functional form of the skyscraper, severe and unadorned. In the new look of the city, beauty lies much deeper than the skin. It is in the very skeleton of the structure. You will find such beauty not only in the buildings, but in the bridges that span the waterways around the island of Manhattan. This is a new bridge across the lower part of New York Harbor. It will be the longest in the world. But New Yorkers don't really care about that. Most of them won't even bother to go down to the end of the island and look at it. It takes a lot to impress a New Yorker. think that tradition would be crushed by the sheer weight of so much modern steel. And yet on Riverside Drive, I saw a strange small procession. I found out that these were Japanese Buddhists celebrating the Festival of Flowers. This festival is based on the belief that on the day Gautama Buddha was born, all the flowers burst into bloom and the sweet rain came down. And so it is a day for children, a day for flowers. Prayers are offered at the shrine and water is symbolically poured on the garden where Buddha was born. Finally, the children sing. years before Christ, Buddha preached that all suffering issues from passion and that therefore the best way to achieve spiritual peace is to avoid passion. Consequently, Buddhists are traditionally non-violent. When they practice kendo, samurai fencing, it is for self-discipline to get rid of aggressive tendencies and bring them under control. Playboy Club and an all-male team. They call it football, 
But actually, this contest is as old as the human race, and the boys don't stand a chance of winning. Bunnies constantly run the risk of losing their tails, and spare tails are kept back home in the dressing room of the Playboy Club. Bunnies wear demure costumes and become very businesslike. They're not allowed to date the male customers, who retaliate by snatching away their tails and keeping them as souvenirs. Sometimes a whole boxful goes in a single night. 